Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Luxverb. This is video two, and today we're talking about the input and reverb section. So let's load up a default patch here, and for this demonstration, I have pigments, and this is a saw wave going into the reverb module over here. So let's play a couple notes and see what it sounds like. Okay, so we have our reverb here. On the left-hand side, we see this wet gain slider. If we drag this all the way to the bottom, we'll notice that we have no more reverb. If we hold Alt and click this again, our reverb comes back. And that is because this slider is determining the input signal into the reverb module. So we can drive this a little bit more and get more reverb out of this. And since driving more of our input signal into the module. So Alt click to the default here. And on the right hand side, we have high cut and low cut. So these are two filters that are going to filter our input signal before it gets reverberated. So let's play some high notes and see what that sounds like. And if we drag this down here, maybe to something kind of kind of healthy here, to maybe 700, a lot of those high frequency content has been removed from the reverb. Not from the input signal, but from the reverb. And back to the top. And the opposite is also true with the low cut. Over here we have 20, so let's play some low notes. As we drag this up here, we notice that the low end content of our reverb has now been filtered. So this is useful to filter your input signal before the reverb has a chance to reverberate your signal. So let's go all the way open up to 20,000 and 20 here on the low cut. And let's hold alt and click on the decay knob going to seven. So this seven is approximately in seconds and it measures how long the reverb tail will take to it for it to decay from maximum amplitude to zero or to minus infinity, depending on your terminology. We can go to a maximum of 20 if we go all the way to the top here. So a 20 second reverb tail, pretty long. Then we can go all the way over here to the left for a very short reverb decay. I'll click and select decay again, and let's move on to brightness because this is an interesting knob here in a nutshell. So what is brightness? So brightness determines the amount of high frequency presence in the reverb tail. This is basically simulating a room between a hard surface tile type of room or maybe more absorbent and dampened type of room. So with some high notes, let's take a listen to see what their tail sounds like. So this might be something that you would more simulate in a bathroom or something like, like that with a lot of reflections and stuff like that. And let's drag this to zero. And we notice right off the bat that the high frequency stuff has been dampened. It's more of a more of an absorbent room that this is simulating. Again at the top. And at the bottom. So let's alt click this and let's move on to size. So size, this is the spacing of the echo arrivals in the reverb response. Now, if we go all the way down to maybe anywhere from zero to 10, according to the manual, it says use small values zero to 10 to simulate an electromechanical or plate-like response. So let's listen to that. And then moderate values from 10 to 50 for a more acoustic response. So let's bring this up maybe to something like 60. And then larger values greater than 50 for cavernous and exaggerated responses. So let's go all the way to the top and see what that sounds like. Let's alt click that. It's a very interesting effect when you modulate that size right there. So moving on to diffusion here. So this mixes in more diffusers before the reverb that break up the regularity and pretty predictability of the echoes. So in a nutshell, imagine you have a room and you're putting more stuff in it, maybe a sofa or some bookshelves and things like that. So sound has a chance to bounce off more types of things and it's diffusing the sound throughout the room. So that's basically what this knob is trying to do. So all the way at the top, let's take a listen to that. And increasing this value with more diffusion, this is going to smooth out the initial echoes of the reverb. 
and then all the way at the bottom here. And then again at the top. All right, let's alt click this here and let's move on to character. So character is also interesting because this determines the structure of the echoes that make up the reverb response. So according to the manual, it says set midway 0.5 for the smoothest and most diffuse reverb tail. And for this effect to be most pronounced, the size control must be high. So let's turn the size all the way up here to the top and let's listen to this character here at 0.5. Let's see what that sounds like here. And values less than 0.5 are going to sound grittier. So let's go all the way down over here and see what that sounds like. And values greater than 0.5 causes the reverb arrivals to bunch up, creating a fuzzy effect, a fuzzy echo effect. So let's listen to that. Very interesting sound. You can almost hear the, the pulsing delays here, and you can see them here in the spectrum, which is also very interesting. So here's all the way to the left. And then now all the way to the right. And now in the center. I'd probably, probably be more partial to the center for this knob here. So let's move on. Let's go to a default patch yet again. And we have pre-delay here. So this is measured in milliseconds here. And this is the amount of time it takes from the input signal until the time reverb takes to be heard. So if we put this all the way to the top here at 500 milliseconds or half a second. Let's take a listen to see what that sounds like. So you can see that little gap in time here is 500 milliseconds from the time we hit that note until we hear the reverb. Now, instead of doing milliseconds, we can also click this T here for tempo. And now this pre-delay is going to be mapped to our tempo. We can also change it to be locked in sync with other values. So we can go all the way to the bottom, add zero to one, and then we can go a little bit higher to, what is that, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So let's go to a default one more time. Now this mod amp and mod freak are very interesting because this is kind of like a chorus effect here. So let's turn this mod amp all the way up to the top here, pretty high up at least, and the mod frequency all the way up. And let's take a listen to see what that sounds like. Almost creepy, ghostly kind of sounding reverb there. And if we have this character knob out here all the way down, it's going to be even more pronounced. So it's almost very strange what you could also put into this reverb, some weird sound generation in the beginning and then feeding that into this type of sound. It could be some really cool results on this. And we can lower this here. A very interesting feature right there. Let's go back to default. Now these sliders here are kind of interesting. So normal is going to be kind of what we've been doing this whole time. So there's no real change. The main things to look about here are freeze and sustain. So freeze mode is interesting because this cuts the input to the reverb and sustains the sound at the moment freeze was selected. So let's take a listen to that. Let's hold down a note. Hit freeze and let go. And as you can see, it's, it's freezing this reverb. It's keeping it sustained. Okay, so let's turn this back to normal and stop, stop. Now we have sustain. So this is similar to freeze, but the input to the reverb is left open. So the sound will continue to build based on the input signal. So let's go over here to sustain, hit a note and let go. And it just keeps going. Now these would be very interesting to automate in that sense, or maybe attached to a certain type of control on your keyboard or something like that. So you could have an easy trigger for that. So very cool thing right there.
And then the last thing here we should talk about here is this HQ button here. It's on by default, and if your computer can handle it, I would definitely recommend to keep it on. So this toggles between interpolation modes. High quality on is higher fidelity with more sustained high frequencies at the expense of some additional CPU usage. If it's off, the interpolation is grittier and the high frequencies die up more quickly. So yeah, that's kind of that in a, in a nutshell. And there's also a note here in the manual. It says the effect of HQ off is more prominent when freeze or sustain are in use since the higher frequencies will slowly die out over time. So yeah, let's take a listen to that. Let's hold it down. Let's turn this off here. Let's hold a note and listen to the freeze. And we can see here, even on this spectrum, that the higher frequencies are kind of getting scooped out right there. So if we stop that again, and then we turn HQ on, and then we hold down a note, freeze. Now we can see it's pretty consistent through all this portion here. So yeah, so that's pretty much the input and reverb section in a nutshell. Hopefully you learned something from this. In the next section, we're going to talk about the feedback, which is probably one of the coolest features of this reverb here with the pitch shifting and so on and so forth. So look forward to that video coming out and we'll see you in that one. Thanks for watching.